going to you know, keep you not thirsty, then why do you drink, right? You drink water because you know for sure that if I drink enough water, it's not going to keep me thirsty, right? And that's why you do it. That's part of your life. How many of you do not drink water on a daily basis? Man, big trouble, right? Yes. To your health. But almost everybody drinks water regularly to hydrate. If you know that Word of God is 100% sure Word of God, then you got to drink it like water. Amen. Amen. I mean, we're, we're, how many ounces of water are we supposed to drink? I don't know. Is it 80 ounces? Eight cups of water you know, on a daily basis. If that's good for your health, right, you, know, you should be drinking the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, eight times a day. Yes. You know? And when you do drink the Word of God, you know, even if it's one verse per day, if it becomes part of your life, it's going to grow, and it's going to grow, and it's going to grow. That's why people always complain. How come I have sure word of prophecy, but I can't get into it? I said, perfect answer, because you don't do it enough. You have to go into the book, yeah. read it over and over and over and over and over. Yes. Something about the Word of God is that the more you read it, the more blessed you become. Yeah. The more you read it, the more you want to read, right? Yes. You know, it's not like you and me. The more we know each other, we don't want to know each other, yeah. right? For some people, right? You know, I mean, because we're not, we're imperfect, right? Amen. That's why, you know, politicians, the more you know about them, you know, you get to dislike them more. You know, more dirt comes out. But, man, but the Word of God, the more you read it, it changes you. Yes. Because as I go to, you know, my next point, when you are sure of the Word of God, then you'll be sure of your salvation. Point number two. You know, there's no reason for you to be doubting your salvation if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because the Bible says if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. I mean, he that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That's 1 John 5, 12 and 13. And John 1, 12 says, But as man has received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Then the word of God says, not I, not anybody else. Word of God says, if you trusted Jesus Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. Amen. You do not have to worry about burning in hell ever. Amen. People who do not have assurance of salvation, people who do not know where they're going after they die, it's because... They don't have that surety on the Word of God. And sometimes nobody shows it to them. Right. No? That's a problem, too. Yes. We have too many false doctrines out there. We have too many false preachers. We have too many people making a living, you know, taking God's name in vain. Yes. I mean, they'll have deeper hell to burn in, right? Yes. But that's the worst thing to do, using God to fill up their bellies. But the funny thing is that people get blinded very easily. Yes. Why? Because we're born with desire to worship a supreme being. And if you go in the wrong direction, and if you stay there, and when someone's warning you, hey, you know, what they're teaching you is wrong, according to the word of God, then you have to wake up. Because if you don't wake up, you just stay in that ditch or, you know, yes. and then you just can never get out. You just go deeper and deeper. It's like a quicksand. Once you fall in, unless someone lifts you out, you're just going to sink and die. Many people, and I know a lot of people have the similar testimony here and listening, you were deceived by the devil. Yes. And you're, you know, following the wrong doctrine, right? There are many calls out there. You know, salvation by works, you know, right. feeling, emotions, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, doing good works, you know, even believing in some people who call themselves Jesus Christ, right? Who call themselves God, right? And then like, I'm the prophet of God, you know, and then you follow them, you give up everything. You give up your youth, you give up your time, you give up your money, 
You give up your family. And at the end of the day, what's left? Nothing. Just empty feeling when some Bible-believing preacher, and it's not just someone who's on the pulpit, but you guys can preach the gospel, tells them that, hey, you know, you've been deceived by the devil. It's time for you to, you know, believe the truth, and then let me show you. Yes. But many of them, they can never give it up. That's why a lot of people, when it comes to salvation, even though it's so easy, they can't be sure about it. Right. Because they're trusting everything other than the Word of God yes. to save them. Or plus Word of God. That's why if you believe in the Word of God, 100% sure, salvation and assurance of salvation comes a lot easier. That's why you have to check your salvation. We always ask that question. If you were to die right now, because the Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Amen. You know, as Brother Richard prayed, you know, life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You and I do not know what's going to happen five minutes from now. You and I could just drop dead because of heart attack. Yes. Do you think any of the person who died of heart attack was prepared for it? No. No. I mean, we have healthy people, healthy men and women just drop dead. I mean, they run like 10 miles every day. They work out every day. They eat as healthy as possible. But suddenly, you hear the news that, hey, you know, that so-and-so just passed away. Yes. You're shocked. That's why, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. You have to make sure where you're going after you die. Amen. I mean, if you believe in the Word of God, it's so simple, right? So salvation, plan of salvation, God made it so simple that even a child can get saved. Thank you, Lord. I mean, you realize you're a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. We're repenting hard. Receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, no strings attached. Amen. You know, the Bible says, you know, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes. Simple as that. Yes. Have you done that? Then you're saved. Woo! What more do you have to be sure about? Amen. You don't have to try to see Jesus in your dream. No. Right? Yeah. He doesn't have to come out in your dream and say, hey, you're saved. <laughs> if, if that has happened to you, then you sin the, you know, angel of light, which is the devil. Yes. Yeah. You and I should always go back to our final authority. Yeah. That's the word of God. Amen. If, you have, if, you, if the Bible is your final authority... And you believe every word that he says. And we're not talking about just picking out some verses right. like some calls do. We're looking at, you know, from beginning to the end yeah. and rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. You know, yeah. right dispensation. You yes. know, right now we're in the church age. And church age is the best age. Woo! Why? Because, right. you know, you just have to trust Christ and you can have eternal security. Yeah. And if you've done that, why would you ever be not sure about your salvation, right? I know, you know, your sins will, you know, give you some doubts, right? right. Yes. But we're all sinners. Amen. We're going to continue to sin, yes. right? However, you could be a sinner, but you don't have to doubt your salvation. Amen. Because it's like this. You have a mom. You have a dad. You could be a good child of your mom and dad or a bad child of your mom and dad. But record says you're still a child of your mom and dad, yes. right? Yes. If you have become a child of God, you could be a good child of God or a bad child of God, but you got to be a child of God forever. Yes. I mean, that's the grace of God. Yes. Simple as that. So you should be sure about your salvation. If you're not, you know, talk to me, talk to any of the brothers and sisters, you know, yes. they'll talk to you. Yes. Last thing we want, you know, as I was talking to brother yesterday night, one thing you and I cannot hang up before is that we have to deal with your salvation. Yes. We can talk about everything else, issues of life later, you know, but this is what we have to talk about yes. before we hang up. Yes. Because we don't know what's going to happen, right? Your minds could change. But at this moment, 
you have to know for sure where you're going after you die. Yes. I mean, thankfully, you know, he had an open heart. And many of you who's here and listening, the fact that you're listening is because you do have open heart. Then if in any way, if you're one in you know, gazillion percent not sure where you're going after you die, you have to make sure. Amen. The last thing is you know, any persons that we dealt with in our church not being sure about where they're going after they die. You, know? you could be unsure about many, many things. Right. You know, who to marry, right? You know, which job to take, you know? Where to go for my vacation, right? You know, you could be unsure about a lot of those things, but you cannot be unsure about where you're going after you That's die. Right. Yes. So if you are sure about the word of God, then you should be sure about your salvation. Yes. And then what comes after? You know, what's the devil gonna do to attack you, right? Right away, after you get saved. You know, all the sins gonna come in your life. And you could be sure that your sin will find you out. Yes. You could be sure about your sins, that God will find you out. And let's turn our Bibles to book of Numbers 32.23. Numbers 32.23. And as the Bible says it's going to happen, then you know for sure that it's going to happen. Then as a saved Christian, you and I have to be sure that my sin will be found out. There's no hiding it. No, there's no hiding it. I mean, you could be the best camouflage Christian, but you know, the Lord's going to reveal it one of these days. Amen. Numbers 32, verse 23, the Bible says, But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure. You know, there's the word sure. It's 100%. Unchangeable, indisputable. It's going to happen without any doubt. Be sure your sin will find you out. That's why it's scary. You know, Galatians 6.1, right? you reap what you sow. Yes. God is such a fair God. Amazingly, perfectly, you know, scientific, you know, best mathematician out there. You know, forget about that clown, you know, Einstein or any of these scholars, you know, Steve Hawking. You know, they don't come close to Almighty God. No, sir. And he's perfect when it comes to math. Yes. I mean, he is. Amen. And everything that you've ever done, whether it be good or bad, after you've gotten saved, Lord will make sure that those will be found out. Amen. Man, that's scary. Man, if you are living in sin right now as a Christian, it will be revealed sooner or later. Yes. I mean, it's not like later, later. That's how God works. Sooner than later, he will reveal it to you. But, I mean, you're like, I'm trying to hide it, Lord. To you, your family, your friends, the church, the world. And your testimony will just blow up. And because of you, certain people who are on the fence of trusting Christ, they're going to say, no. Man, I thought he, I thought she was a Christian. You know, they're trying to witness to me the other day. Man. Wow, well, just coming out of the bar right there, coming out of this and that, you know, you know, smoking, you know, smell full of, you know, joint and everything else in between, you know, you know, Las Vegas, you know, coming out of every, going there every weekend, you know, I know it's not for food, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh man, how hard you try to hide your sin. The word of God says, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. Why would Bible have verses like in 1 John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, his faith and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why? Because as Christians, you and I continue to commit sin and not realizing the repercussions that it's going to bring, what your decision is going to bring to you and your family, what to all the rest of the generations if Lord tarries. Because it will be found out no matter what. You're a cheater, you'll be found out. You're a liar, you'll be found out. You're a gossiper, you'll be found out. I mean, Wednesday, you know, as we're in, you know, Book of Numbers, you know, Brother Caleb preached a, you know, very good message. You know, yes. And about, you know, critical spirit. You have critical spirit? 
it will be found out, right? I mean, we mention over and over and over, you know, we're so few in the first place. The majorities are not saved. You're saved. Majority don't believe in the Word of God, King James Bible. You believe it. Your majority don't even have a local church to go to. You have it. But you take it for granted. And then instead of, you know, loving brethren, instead of encouraging brethren, instead of admonishing brethren, all you have is critical spirit. Man, preacher preaches for 50 minutes. Man, today he went 51. I'm angry. <laughs> preacher preaches for usually 50 minutes. He ended at 40 now. He's not right with the Lord. You know, he's one minute too early, right? And <laughs> you start complaining about, you know, brethren, right? You know. I mean, Wednesday people know when Brother Caleb preached. I mean, you start looking at everybody's faults. I mean, are you that type of person? No. I mean, the world is like that, yes. except, you know, if you're certain groups, you know, they say you only see positivity, which is completely against what they believe in, right? Are you the type of person, you know, when it comes to loving brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, you just, you're just all about critical stuff, right? We all have faults, yes. right? We have young Christians, we have old Christians. We have someone who's right with the Lord, right? and we have someone who's backslidden. Yes. You know, we have everything. Again, you should never be okay with sin in the first place. No. However, you've got to have grace. Amen. God continues to have great grace on you and me. Yes. That's why we're not dead. That's why we're not with him right now, you know, because he still has grace on us. Then you've got to have some grace on other people. That's right. Right? I mean, I'm not perfect. No, I just have different roles than you guys, yes. right? Maybe the Lord just put me as a pastor, and that's it. Yes. Nothing more different. I'm just human being just like you, Amen. just like everybody. So each person is where you are because of your roles, right? You're just a father right now, you know, leading a family. Good. That's a great responsibility. Your mother, you know, your child, you know, everyone has a great responsibility, yes. you know, in the sight of God. At church, you clean, you ch do chores, you know, you set up chairs, you know, you, you greet people, you know, be hospitable. That's your role. Yes. That's good. Amen. You should never look at someone else and start comparing. That's the biggest fault of a Bible-believing Christian. And that's one of the biggest sins of a Bible-believing Christian. Amen. You always compare. Don't compare. You should only compare yourself to Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's it. I mean, why would you compare to someone sitting next to you? Am I prettier than person today? Am I more handsomer than that person today? Do I smell better than that person today? You know, I mean, what's the point? You're all in the one body of Jesus Christ. Amen. You should admonish each other, right? Yes. Hey, instead of criticizing someone for, you know, some tiring face, you'd be like, oh, man, maybe something's going through. Right. You know, something's going on in that person's life, you know, that brother and sister's life. You know, and then you pray for that person. Yes. Instead of opening the can of worms and behind their back, you start talking, right? Ah, the way they talk, the way they dress, you know. Oh, man, they don't have this, they don't have that. You know? I mean, church shouldn't be a cliques, a bunch of cliques, right? No. Well, yeah, so you have to have a house in order to join our club. You have to drive a certain car in order to join our club, right? You have to know how to cook in order to join our club, right? I can't join there, right? And then you have to, you know, you have to, like, you know, do this and that. I mean, what's the point? Then don't be at a church. Go to a local club. Right. There are a bunch of clubs out there, yeah. right? And if you're that type of person who loves to be showy, right, who loves to show your, you know, pompous attitude, this is not a church for you right. because we can't stand it. And then as Lord will find your sin out, then there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be disciplines, right? Yes. That's biblical way. Yes. Because God has to keep order inside the church. Yes. That's why if those things ever happen to any brothers and sisters in Christ who does not go against the rules that are set in local church, you know, to keep order, then 
I think I mentioned it. You know, Dr. Ruckman said it. If someone's going to kill my zeal for serving the Lord, I cut off communication. That's what you got to do. Yes. Then you give that brother or sister in Christ some chance to get right. When you're isolated all alone and nobody's with you, then you might have a chance, you know, to actually, man, something's wrong with me. But that should happen to you right now. Amen. Because if you say to yourself, that's not me, then you're already up there. That's right. your, your, your pride is up there. Yes. Well, that, yeah. We're only talking about other people. No, it's you and it's yeah. me. Yeah. That kind of humble attitude where you know that you're the person who could break the church and split and have any day of the week, right. you have to know. Mm-hmm. You have to. That's why, like our text verse says, you and I have to examine ourselves. Yes. That's why I get rid of that, you know, Miriam spirit, yes. Aaron spirit. Critical spirit, especially against the leaders of the church, right? Amen. Not because I'm better than you or teachers or, you know, pastors' wives are better than you. You know, God just put them in those places for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. You no. Know, everybody has to go through a step, and the Lord sees how faithful you are. Yes. Then who are you to criticize people of God? They get angry, like Moses, or are you going to just criticize him, oh, you shouldn't have gotten angry. You don't know the story, right? I mean, Moses is amazing. Even though these people, Israelites, bicker against him, complained against him, murmur against him, he still loved them so much. When God tried to destroy them all, Moses said, no, 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 God, you got to have mercy on them, right? And these people don't even know his heart. And you have to understand, whenever you hear some criticism towards, you know, leaders of the church, pastor, pastor's wife. You got to understand that's the, you know, devil's, you know, devilish spirit, yes. you know, trying to break you. At the end of the day, you know, if you keep on living in your sin, when your sin is found out, you're going to have two choices. Either you get right or you just leave. Simple as that. And you never want to get to that point because you don't know how your heart's going to react at that time. Because at that time, if you reject and if you refuse to get right with the Lord, then your faith is done. Yes. Right? We have many people you know, who went through our church in the beginning. They're all gung-ho, right? Oh, yeah, we love the truth. That's why it's very important, you know. Don't go ahead of yourselves. Yes. You have to pray. You have to witness. You have to be a, you know, exemplary, you know, mom, dad, children. Be a good worker at work, you know. Yes. You have to do all of that. Why? Because if you say, you know what, I love the Word of God. I'm going to study night and day. You know, I'm going to get all the Dr. Ruckman's commentary. You know what happened to many of those people? They're the one who, you know, rebelled because they thought they know better than everybody else now. Yes. You know, there's a reason why you need to have experience, right? Amen. There's a reason why you tell your children, I've gone through this before. That's why I'm telling you, yes. right? Because as children, you don't know better. That's why you have to grow step by step. That's why don't try to, you know, puff up your knowledge. Mm-hmm. Try to be faithful in everything that you have to do. Amen. Then you won't fall into the sin problems that easily. Amen. Right? Again, so if you're 100% sure about the Word of God, and Word of God tells you, you know, if you have questions about any sin that you're about to commit, the Word of God says, no, don't do it. Right? Amen. Then don't do it. And salvation, right? Word of God says you have 100% you should have assurance of salvation. And it's the sin. You could solve your sin problems now. You could be sure. As I said, if you have any sin problems in your life, you confess your sins, right? Yes. You're not going to go into a priest or in a room or go to any other people. No, you go straight to God and confess your sins and get right with the Lord. Yes. And we're not talking about this, you know, wishy-washy, you know, prayer. God, I'm sorry for everything I've done since I got saved. Please forgive me. 
It doesn't work like that. You got to be specific. Yes. You got to be truly sorry about what you've done. Amen. If you don't remember, ask the Holy Ghost to help you remember. Yes. Right? I mean, you should get to a point, every single lie is pricking you. Oh, it's yes. convicting you so much that you have to get right with the Lord. Yes. Because some people, lying is just part of their life. Did you do this? Yeah. You didn't, right? right? What about this? Yeah. But it's no. What about this? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, kids do it all the time, too, right? Right. Did you wash your face? You know, did you brush your teeth? Did you wash up? Did you do your homework? Did you do your chores, everything? They say, yeah, yeah, mom, you know? Yeah, dad. But your room is like, you know, pigsty, you know? Trash is everywhere, flies flying everywhere. <laughs> and you're lying. But if that's you and me in the sight of God. Yeah. We're supposed to clean up our room. We're supposed to clean up things in our life. Amen. And then Lord warns you and me. And you're like, oh yeah, Lord, we got I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, Lord. I'm gonna do it. Wow. You know? But you never do it. And then when you really get in trouble, you break the window over and over. You're not supposed to throw baseball or play with baseball in your room. Yeah. And then you break it over and over. Like, okay, now it's time for you to pay. And then this is going to really happen in your life. Your sin will find you out. Yeah. But the scary thing about God is that, as I mentioned, since he's so perfect, he has to make you pay perfectly. Can you imagine? The Lord has great grace and mercy. So, you know, when you're in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ, if you get right with the Lord... He will not remember anymore. He will not judge you for it. But here on earth, what you sow with your physical body, you have to rip it. Yes. You have to pay for it. Of course, you still got to ask God for mercy and grace. Yes. I mean, if you don't even ask God for mercy and grace, then forget it. You know, you know it's like it's wide open season, right? Hunting season, right? But if you realize your sins, just like David did, right? After adultery and you know murder, God still showed grace, but David had to go through so much until you know he died. Right? He saw so much. So I mean, as a father, he saw so many things that he should normally would not see if he did not commit those sins. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, you are going to go through it if you haven't already. All the sins that you and I ever committed after we've gotten saved, right? Even before we got them saved, God is fair, right? right. I mean, he's not going to judge at the judgment of Christ. But if, you, if you've been a you know, drug user all your life, after you got them saved, don't think that you suddenly become 100% healthy. No, you're what you saw. If you smoke all your life, you know, you could get lung cancer. You bright on yourself. Right. But God will give you grace and mercy to get through it better, right? After you got them saved, you still smoke, do drugs, you know, do every bunch of other sins. You know, God can still show you grace and mercy, but you're going to pay for it. Amen. I mean, but number one thing is that you have to confess your sins. You have to get right with the Lord. And maybe you'll reap a little bit less than you're supposed to. Thank you, Lord. Instead of 100, you know, fruits, you're only going to maybe, you know, reap maybe 50. Yes. 25. But the 100% thing guarantees that you have to reap no matter what. Yes. Why? Because God is fair God. God is perfect God. Because there are going to be too many complainers out there. You're sending me to hell. Devil's talking, you know, like how he was accusing Job. Hey, that sinner. You're going to just leave him alone? You're a holy God. I mean, Lord, you know what? They're going to pay for it. Just wait. You know, yes. I might give you permission to hurt them a little bit, but just wait. That's why you and I have to be serious, sure about sin. If you have any sin in your heart right now, if you're living in any sin, you're going to pay for it. Yes. God will reveal it. And usually when he reveals it, that's when you're going to have biggest hurt. Mm -hmm. He's not going to just reveal it, you know, when you're going through this, such a hardship and stuff, you're already down, man, suddenly, I mean, you're thinking everything's good. You know, like those, you know, drug dealers, right? Yeah. They're living like this crazy, nice, you know, affluent life, and suddenly, you know, all this FBI, you know, these agents come and arrest them. And they're in jail and some of them get executed. 
They always say, I didn't see that coming. You know, <laughs> they've been running for like 20, 30 years. It's spectacular, right? News media makes it a huge story. That's going to happen to you. Amen. It's going to be a spectacular revealing dates when your sins are revealed to everybody. If you don't get right with the Lord, you know, people around you are going to find out. You're hiding from your husband and wife, they're going to find out. Yes. They're not stupid. They might already know, right? Your children's going to find out. Right. Your mommy and daddy's going to find out. You know, all these young kids nowadays, you know, they think they could hide everything from their parents. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a technical gadget wizard. You know, my parents are from this old generation. They don't know how to use this. Man, it's not that hard to figure some stuff out because there's a thing called Google, right? <laughs> Even like ChatGPT or the new stuff, AI stuff. Okay, how do I find that history, you know, of my child's, you know, internet browsing stuff, you know? He goes, oh, this is how you do it, step by step. Yes. Oh, how do I find out, you know, my husband and my wife, you know, stuff? You know, because something seems very fishy, right. right? Blah, 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 blah. It comes out. Everything's revealed. It's so easy to reveal everything. And you think if this, you know, human-made AI system and other things could reveal a bunch of stuff, uh -huh. don't you think Almighty God can just do it That's just like right. that? Right. You and I should thank God for his grace and mercy right yes. now. That we're not being destroyed in front of our loved ones and everybody else of our sins. Amen. What does that tell you? He's merciful God who's still giving you and I chance to get right. Yes. But once you get right, brethren, it's, a, it's like your burdens are lifted. Amen. Of course, all of our sins, our burdens are lifted at Calvary, right? Amen. Past and future. Spiritually speaking, your soul is white as snow. Woo! Don't worry about that. Praise the Lord for that. But your flesh, the you that I see you right now, have too much sin. Yes. And it's holding you down. I'm 100% sure that you could be a better Christian. I could be a better Christian yes. if I get rid of this sin problem. Good preaching. Just once and for all. Yes. You know, at first, just admit it. You and I are addicted to certain type of sin. Amen. So we're addicts. Just yes. like alcoholics, gamblers, just like, you know, druggies, right? So don't, don't look down on them either. No, the same. You do the same thing. That's right. It's in a different ways. Amen. Then once you stop, what are you going to have? What are you going to feel? You're going to have withdrawal symptoms, right? Very dangerous. Yes. Withdrawal symptoms, right? Then you have to stay in the word of God. Sure word of prophecy. Let the word of God give you strength to defeat those sins. Amen. Pray to the Lord, right? Yes. Get yourself busy doing things like God. Yes. Man, then after you stop what you've been doing for years and years, first few days, so tough. And then second week becomes a little bit easier. Third week, fourth week. Yeah. And then months goes by. You're like, man, why didn't I live this clean in the past? Amen. And I'm supposed to be a Christian. Christ liveth in me. Yeah. You know? I have the Holy Spirit as my comforter. Why didn't I do this earlier? Then you become a stronger Christian. Then you have a stronger testimony. Then you have more power when you're witnessing, sharing the gospel, preaching the gospel to other people. Yes, sir. Amen. Because you're clean. Amen. Clean. So there's something about being holy. It's sure that our Lord is 100% holy. Amen. And it's sure that if you strive to be holy, you, you're going to feel, how should I say, something that these worldly people cannot understand. No. That joy that only comes from the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. That assurance that only comes from the Lord. That promise that you could trust in the Lord. Yes. Right? Then if you're not going to live holy, if you're not going to get rid of your sin problem, then just wait. Sooner or later, the Lord's going to do it. It could be tomorrow, it could be today, it could be, I mean, a week from now, but it's for sure. Don't take God's word for granted. Don't take God's warnings for granted. You take anything for granted, then the Lord's going to judge you quickly. I mean, one of the sins that I think we always go through is being unthankful, right? Yes. 
you know, are you thankful for your eyesight today? Because from what I understand, everyone could see. Are you thankful for your hearing, right? Are you thankful that you could use your two hands, both legs? Are you thankful that, you know, you could digest? Are you thankful for everything? Because an unthankful person, you never know. Lord could just take it away, right. just like that. I mean, God forbid. I mean, can you imagine? You can't see anymore. I mean, that would be one of the hardest things to go through ever. You're not born as a blind person, but, you know, because as a Christian, you took things for granted, and you lose your health, and you lose your vision, you lose your, you know, everything else hearing. I mean, what are you going to do? Why do you have to wait? until it's all said and done, until you have paid for everything to change. Mm. One sure thing is that when you go to the Lord and get right with the Lord and resolve your sin problems, it's gone forever. For that part, you won't have to be burdened about it. And thank God for that. And as Things that will come your way as you reap what you've done in the past. You have more strength and you have more grace and mercy from God yes. to go through with it. Prime example again, David lost his child. His son's trying to kill him, right? There's, there's wicked stuff going on within the family. But he still trusted in the Lord. We read through all the Psalms. And he got him through it. Amen. If you live the holy life, you know, good for you. Less baggage is always better. Amen. If someone tells you, if it's your parents or anybody goes, hey, you have to go through it, you know, to know more about life. That's a baloney. And that's the, you know, most wickedest thing and stupidest thing I ever heard where your parents go, yeah, you know, my kid needs to commit sin to realize the grace and mercy of God. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, oh, yeah, you know, they shouldn't go to proms. You know, bad things happen, but, you know, I'm going to let them go so that they could see what those bad things are. No. And then they'll appreciate it. No. Right? The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes, sir. You protect yourself from evil. You protect your wife and husband from evil. You protect your children from evil. Amen. Then it's 100% sure that those things will not bother you anymore. Right. How long have you been, you know, bound by sin? How long have you had these questions about where you're going to go after you die? How long have you, you know, neglect the sure word of prophecy, right? It's time for you to be sure. Yes. You know, it's a great question that I have to ask. You have to ask on a daily basis. Yes. Are you sure about the sure word of prophecy today? I mean, that includes reading it, meditating on it. And yes. then putting it into action. Are you sure about salvation? You're saved? Then share the gospel to other people. Amen. They need to be sure as well. Are you sure about your sins? Because it's going to come out sooner yes. or later. Get right with the Lord. And then don't let other people commit sin because of you either. And as a head of household, many of you, as mothers and fathers, you will cause your children to sin. Right. Because that's all they look at. Yeah, my dad cussed. My mom cussed. So I'm going to do it. You know, kids don't lie. Unless they're super, super, super wicked. A lot of times they'll be like, hey, where'd you learn that? Oh, yeah. I saw it from TV that my mom and dad was watching. You know? <laughs> you know, I, oh, yeah. You know? yeah my, my parents said, you know, white lies is okay. You know? It's the real lies you shouldn't, but white lies are okay. You know? I mean, all those things, giving excuses for your children to sin. You do not want to be that person with the bad testimony. That's right. You and I have to be sure about what God has given us. And that's eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have to be sure about serving the Lord once and for all. You have to be sure about surrendering. If you haven't, surrender now. Yes. 100%. You have to be sure, sure, 100% sure who you are. You're a child of God. You shouldn't act like the devil's child. Amen. You shouldn't act like the world. You shouldn't act like anything that will bring bad testimony to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then when someone asks you, are you sure? Man, you're going to have that joy.
to say, I'm sure. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we are just imperfect. We're wicked, Lord. Our first instinct is to complain, murmur, and criticize, especially other people, Lord. And we're not even sure about our own Christian walk, but we are sure about other people's Christian work, Lord God. Help us to get right with you, Lord. We have this perfect word of God, sure word of prophecy, but we neglect it, Lord. Uh, how shameful are we, Lord? I mean, so many people gave up their life for this, and you have preserved your word. And we just don't even read it on a daily basis. You know, shame on us, Lord. Help us get right with you. And yet we have this perfect salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to having, you know, doubting, that's already wrong, but we don't even go out there and share the gospel and preach the gospel to others. When they are so doubtful about where they're going, we need to be out there preaching the gospel so that these lost souls out there will have a sure, 100%, Sure, it tell where they're going. And help us to be sure about our sin problems, Lord. Help us to realize our sins that's you know, burdening our lives and stopping us from serving you, Lord. Help us get right. And Father, I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day and our number one prayer, Lord. We're sure that you're coming back, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.